Welcome to Corpse Club, the official podcast of DailyDead.com. I'm one of your co-hosts, Jonathan James, and today I am joined by Derek Anderson and Brian Christopher. It's uh, I think it's been a little bit since the three of us got together, or maybe it, it happened not too long ago and I forgot. I, I don't know what day it is. I don't know what month it is. I don't remember who we recorded with I last think it's time. been a few weeks for me. I think it has. Least. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds really confident for the beginning of this episode. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, you been, are. Yes, yeah, and who are you? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, as, as it continues on over the last two years, it's just uh, these years have blended. I don't know. Sometimes it feels like days. Sometimes it feels like decades. Um, but I'm excited to be with the both of you. We are going to talk a little bit about our Hellraiser Razor. If you don't know what that is, we'll tell you. We're going to talk about Pearl. We're going to talk about this is Guar. We're going to talk about the invitation, and I'm sure we'll talk about more too. But uh, as I mentioned, we're going to start with uh, with the Hellraiser Razor, and you're like, what the hell is that? Well, it is uh, Brian's brainchild, and it is uh, it was a streaming Twitch based. Hellraiser Marathon, all for charity. It was awesome, but I'm going to let Brian tell you about his experience because I was merely a guest for a couple segments. <laughs> yeah, it was it was awesome as a whole. There were definitely some moments that were uh, less than awesome, like mainly most of Revelations and also shaving my beard off. Uh, <laughs> well, well, you got to you got you got to tell our our, our listeners though, who, who did not take part in the Hellraiser Razor. Yeah, what um, what is it? Did, what yeah, is what it? is yeah. it? How did you lose your beard? Yeah, for those who are unfamiliar, uh, so we have started a new Twitch channel, uh, Daily Dead Twitch, if you are interested in following. Um, we did a an initial watch party last month with Kaylin from Salem Horror uh, to kind of kick off the, the channel, but the whole, I think, the, the seed for me wanting to start the channel was I really wanted to do a fundraiser. You know, we have been seeing, you know, more and more kind of disturbing trends in terms of the way we treat people in the transgender community, the way we treat women's reproductive rights, uh, the way we keep trying to take away women's reproductive rights. And so, you know, I wanted to do something to support the organizations that were doing the work, you know, and there were two that came to mind. One was the Trans Empowerment Project. Another was Sister Song. Uh, Sister Song is a reproductive justice organization out of, uh, I believe, Atlanta, Georgia. And so I was trying to think, okay, what's a good way to, you know, get some funds and get some donations to them. And I figured, well, I'm a big Hellraiser fan. People have heard me talk about it ad nauseum at this point. So why not just go through a marathon and watch every single one of them and invite people to come out and watch? Uh, we were looking for a good way to like, what would be the best platform for that? And it seemed like Twitch was just kind of a natural fit for it. And so we did it over the last two weekends uh, from when you're hearing this. It was the uh, September 9th and 10th and uh, September 16th and 17th. Also as a way to celebrate the 35th anniversary of the original Hellraiser. And so, yeah, we, we split it up into two weekends. I did five movies one weekend, another uh, five movies the next weekend. Uh, and we had a bunch of guests on. We watched Hellraiser movies. Uh, some of them, you know, are my favorite movies in the whole wide world. And some of them I would rather put my head in a blender than ever watch again. So don't I, hold I, I, yourself to that. You never I, know. I don't know, man, this might be it for me on some <laughs> of these. Uh, like, you know, it, there's a lot of them I'll still watch. Obviously the first four, four I love. Um, I, I've affirmed the fact that I really do like hell world for as goofy as it is. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> uh, but the rest of them, I think I might put those on the shelf never to pick them up again. Cause it's just, they're getting more and more painful to watch. Uh, fortunately I had some really fun people to watch them with, to make fun of them with, um, and to watch me put myself through more torture than just doing the, the movies themselves. Um, you know, we set up some goal incentives for people once we we hit certain benchmarks so um the first weekend it was all kind of like i'm really not a fan of vinegar based foods so there was a lot of imbibing various vinegar based products uh, when we hit certain uh goals uh when people saw how badly i reacted to it um they tended to want to see more of it so as we hit more goals people were just like drink more vinegar vinegar boy um so <laughs> I, I had a stomach ache by the end of the first weekend but we got through it with 1150 dollars 
to went to the trans empowerment project so that was pretty freaking awesome yeah that was so great yeah um and then the second weekend um i tailored it more to uh various headwear and uh at the end of the kind of the uh, the, I don't know, the rainbow, if you will, of uh, goal incentives. If we got to a thousand dollars, I would agreed to shave my beard, which is probably my favorite like thing on my person. Uh, I would shave it down to just a horseshoe mustache, which uh, as we were getting to the end of like the second to last movie, we hit a thousand dollars. So, you know, I went with it, shaved it off and then immediately regretted it because i do not like what i look like without a beard but it was still it was so much fun um between the two weekends we raised a total of two thousand one hundred and fifty dollars which i am absolutely blown away by um everybody was super generous um i do want to give special shout out to um uh I actually don't even, I guess they would be followers. I'm not sure, I'm not even sure what you call a, a, a Twitch channel uh, person. Watchers. Along. Yeah. Watchers, yeah. Um, but uh, Pop Culture Void and Fingers of the Temple were there almost every step of the way. Pop Culture Void was absolutely there every step of the way. Uh, and Fingers of the Temple was there, if not the whole time, like 90% of the time and like donated a shitload of money. Um, everybody did. Um, so I just want to thank everybody who tuned in. I want to thank everybody who donated. I also want to thank all the guests we had. Uh, you made some pretty unbearable movies bearable. So I uh, had a great time. And that's present company included. Uh, Derek and Jonathan both joined me for, uh, uh, Derek joined me for actually my least favorite Hellraiser movie, Hellseeker, which is saying something. Um, but you brought a level of, you know, that usual standard Derek cheer to the proceedings. So thank you for that. Oh, it was my pleasure. And it was a first time watch too. So I was just thrilled to see the guy from the Mayhem commercials in a Hellraiser movie, Dean uh, Winters. <laughs> I was like, this is a Mayhem prequel origin story. <laughs> and then also Doug Bradley looking with the with the the, the hair and the and the, like the little uh, the beard, the goatee, kind of like he's in an alt rock band from the early 2000s. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, emo Doug Bradley was was fun to watch. Um, that was maybe the only fun part of that movie. Um, and then, of course, Jonathan, who was uh, first on board for uh, Hellworld uh, and then actually stepped in last minute to uh, to sub in for the original Hellraiser at the uh, the end of the weekend. So um, thank you, Jonathan. Um, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Oh, of, of course. And yeah, it was, it was it was great to be there for Hellworld. It was a, a nice surprise to uh, to be there for the last film and to, um, you know, and to, just because, you know, I wasn't uh, I was out of town that first week, but I was still kind of keeping an eye for my phone and just to see, you know, how many people were, you know, whether it's sharing, you know, links on Twitter and commenting after the fact, sharing pictures, um, commenting, you know, in the Twitch stream. It was just cool to kind of have everybody get involved, um, you know, whether you just donated or you liked something or you shared it, uh, you shared a message, got people to, to get on the channel. It was great to see everybody come together for such a great cause. Yeah, no, I was, I'm so, so happy and blown away by how uh, everything came together um, and how great everybody was. Um, and just keep in mind this, you know, I I probably won't be doing one of these marathons anytime soon, but the, the Twitch stream is going to be an ongoing thing. I plan on getting something going uh, at least once a month, you know, getting together for, you know, guests for watch parties. And I also want to start doing some stuff that's maybe horror video game related, maybe get some uh, horror tabletop stuff going. So uh, there should be some really fun stuff coming up in the future on the twitch stream so again uh, daily dead twitch if you want to follow it it's free to set up an account on twitch um and even if you only follow us um that's that's reason enough i think to uh to get a twitch account going yeah, I agree. And we're going to be doing more through Twitch. It's just, uh, it's a fun platform. Um, and this was a, uh, an exciting and, and great reason to, uh, to, to jump on there. So, um, we'll be doing something Corpse Club by Jason on there at some point, whether it's, you know, more watch parties or something. Uh, and, I do need to give a special thanks to Andrea Subasati from Rue Morgue and Faculty of Horror, uh, who also has her own Twitch stream um, at uh, Necromandria. Uh, she is actually the one who taught me how the hell to set up my Twitch feed or my Twitch channel or the Daily Dead Twitch channel. Um, it was something where like when I was looking down the barrel of trying to get this thing set up, it was just super intimidating. So having her kind of walk me through some of the basics was just really, really helpful. And I really appreciate the support on that. 
Yeah, I think we were all Twitch newborns, and even though I didn't do a lot, you did, and you made it look easy, even though I know it probably took a, a bit of a learning curve and, <laughs> and all that. But uh, but no, I mean, it's it, technical issues can frequently plague people, and it was smooth. So, um, yeah, it was really good. And you got uh, Scott Drevit on there as well, so that was uh, a lot of fun to uh, see you guys doing your your Twitch stream for, I believe it was uh, Hellraiser Deader. Yep. Yep. That awesome. was the one. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it, what's, what's, what's more dead than dead deader. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it I was kind of nice. It was kind of nice, Scott. And I haven't gotten to do our, uh, like our bonus commentary episodes for a while. So it felt like mm. a return to being able to do that, including plenty of tangents about things that had nothing to do with the movie we were watching. So that tended to be a theme for a lot of, actually the, the number one thing that, kept coming up with all the guests when especially when we were watching some of the not so great entries we kept talking about other movies that we realized we'd rather be watching yeah like moments where you're you're thinking this movie is borrowing from like iconic scenes from other movies and then you just mm -hmm. start thinking about oh i really want to watch that movie again you know because <laughs> it reminded me of something else <laughs> Yeah, definitely not but the dice you way. want to be. Definitely not the dice you want to be rolling on a direct to video Hellraiser movie in terms of like making people think of other better movies. <laughs> yeah, but we get. I'm excited because this was a nice lead into a brand new Hellraiser movie. I don't think yes. any of us have seen the trailer. I know Derek hasn't. I know Brian hasn't. I peeked at pieces of the trailer, um, so there's there's no spoilers from us because we don't really know anything. But. Uh, we're only weeks away from, from most of us from being able to see it. So I am super excited. I cannot wait. Yeah, I'm trying to see as little as possible. Like I've, you know, I've seen the initial photos of Jamie Clayton as Pinhead and a couple of the other, uh, you know, the, the promotional stills they first put out. But I don't want to see the trailer. I don't want to read any interviews. I don't want to know what's coming with this movie until it comes out. It actually worked out really well that you did the Twitch stream recently because, yeah, not only were you celebrating 35 years of Clive Barker's Hellraiser, but now you were also kind of giving people an excuse to rewatch or watch for the first time all of these Hellraiser movies leading up to the new film. So it's almost like you were working in tandem with Hulu there, whether that was intentional or not. But we really were glad. not. It was it was not <laughs> not Hulu a Hulu sanctioned event. <laughs> it was Hulu not Huluween. <laughs> but Hulu, if you caught wind of it and you liked what you saw and you want to give like a diehard Hellraiser fan like an early screener of the upcoming <laughs> Hellraiser reboot, like I wouldn't say no. That's that's all I'm saying. Yeah, it put put it out into the world. <laughs> I think I think uh well, I don't think they're listening, think, but you might as well put it out there. Probably I mean, not, but who knows? Of all, of all the Hellraiser fans out there, I mean, you put yourself through, you know, you you paid your dues recently. You drank vinegar way. for the franchise. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was funny seeing you drink vinegar, by the way. Uh, he had, in, in, in my segment, you, you had a vinegar shot with like a, with a pickle, which I thought was going to be a pickle chaser, but it was, you had the pickle slice first yeah, it, was, and, it was like a garnish yeah yeah but you, you almost choked, <laughs> choked on the pickle slice first before you got to the to well the my vinegar. thought was i would i would start with a pickle and then like i would wash it down with the vinegar and yeah. just kind of push it all through and get it yeah. all done if i do the pickle afterwards then i have the initial vinegar jolt and then i gotta like chew through the pickle and just kind of draw it out so i mean it sucks either way so i was just it's kind of a pick your poison situation yeah but it was uh it, it, it was, we it was good. Oh, you go ahead. Oh, well, we were watching Hellseeker. I kept expecting you, Brian, to like put yourself through some painful ordeal, but I think watching you, Hellseeker I think was the painful ordeal. <laughs> <laughs> so you were doing more of a psychological mm -hmm. torture at that point. But no, I'm glad we got to experience that together. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so. We're going to talk very briefly. I will say very briefly because I don't want spoilers, but very briefly about Pearl, because I know you saw it, Derek, and uh, I haven't had a chance to see it. I haven't. It's at a drive-in far away because mm -hmm. I'm not going to theaters because I'm staying socially distant as much as I can. And um, so I expect that I'll check it out when it hits VOD. And I don't have any details. I really don't because now it sounds like I know something. I just would expect them to release it before Halloween because usually the VOD window is like mm -hmm. six weeks. And like, why wouldn't you release this movie like around that time? So I'm hoping it comes out around then so I can see it. But uh, I've heard nothing but great things. Uh, what did you think, Derek? 
Uh, yeah, I absolutely loved it. And I know I will try not to go too far into detail. Uh, but I had a, I had a, a unique uh, viewing experience as well. I went to a four o'clock showing at the local theater. Um, I was the only one in my theater. So that's always interesting when you're sitting there in a, in a theater by yourself watching a horror movie. And I was actually in the lobby and I was almost like one of the only people in the entire like multiplex at this point. And I, I missed lunch. So I got a hot dog and uh some pretzel some chocolate covered pretzels and they're like they gave me the uh the order for my hot dog and they're like well here's your your number and we'll call your number when uh when your order's done and i'm just looking around in this cavernous lobby like it's just you <laughs> so also, or Der derek is this you not going into too much detail about your experience well, with the movie? <laughs> hey, hey, I'd, I'd rather him talk of, i'd rather him talk about this than the talk about the movie the yeah, movie <laughs> yeah. I'm like, trust me i'm leaving a lot of stuff out this is not the director's <laughs> cut um but no so it was just funny i love like when random stuff happens like that when you go especially when you go see a movie alone like it, just random stuff always seems to happen but it so anyway you know I, and then they're like order number three and i'm looking around and i'm like i guess this is me but uh it was so it was all good uh but no it was it was a lot of fun um of course i i know in past episodes we've talked about ty west x uh, which takes place decades after this movie. Which, this movie is actually, you know, the prequel of uh, one of the characters from X, Pearl. And it's set in 1918 uh, during World War I. And it's following Pearl as like a young woman living on this farm with her parents. And um, her, her father is uh, paralyzed. So she has to, uh, she takes care of him quite a bit. Um, her mom is really demanding of of Pearl doing a lot of chores and helping out around the house and and the farm. And then meanwhile, her husband is also her husband Howard is off uh, in the trenches fighting in World War One. So it's really like this psychological exploration of how Pearl came to be the person she was when we see her in X, like what her upbringing was like, what made what kind of happened in her formative years, and while all this is going on, there's also, uh, you know, the real life plague going on that was happening in 1918. So like people, when they go into town, they wear masks, they're worried about getting infected. It's like very eerily similar to the pandemic that we've been dealing with, uh, except it's set, you know, a hundred years prior. So there's, it's a very relatable movie, uh, to modern day, uh, more than you would think for a movie that's set in 1918. But uh, it's it's wonderful. It's very like whimsical, um, as as Heather Wixon wrote in her review on Daily Dead. It's kind of this homage to the golden age of movie making, that Wizard of Oz, Technicolor, a whimsical kind of era of movie making. And I, it tonally, it's so different from X, but it's also like the perfect companion movie. And not just with Easter eggs and things taking place at the same location, just like the whole vibe of it is somehow like very, very much a companion to X. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see uh, the th when we have a third movie coming out called Maxine set in the 80s, like how they just bring this whole trilogy together, because I think they've done a wonderful job uh, having these two movies so far as a like a double feature. Uh, but yeah, I loved it. It's it's gory. It's uh, it's very delightful, uh, but also very disturbing. And I think they really nailed a, a very unsettling yet sunny tone with it. So I'm excited for people to check it out. Nice. Yeah, I can't wait. I haven't seen a lot intentionally, but I've just heard uh, a lot of good feedback from uh, from everybody who's seen it. So, yeah, I'll be I'll be checking it out as soon as I can. Like I said, sometime around Halloween. <laughs> And it's, yeah, it's, still, it's still so wild to me that there's a trilogy, like a surprise trilogy coming out over the course of a year. Yeah. And it's kind of great, too, because Ty West hasn't really done anything in about a decade. Um, and uh, always such a such a great director. And to see him back with like, you know, what sounds like it'll be three incredible movies already, two from from what people are saying. I mean, and I really liked X. Um, and so. You know, even if I, I what I've always said is even if I'm not on board with what he's been making, I always am happy that he's he's doing what he's doing. Um, 
because uh, I think in some cases his, his older films were a bit of an acquired taste um, or maybe you appreciate them more after multiple viewings. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I love Dex. I can't wait for, uh, for Pearl. I can't wait for Maxine. So um, glad you liked it. Yeah. And, you know, Mia Goth is as she was in, in X playing two characters. She's just phenomenal in the movie. People have been talking about this really epic monologue that she has in it. And it definitely lives up to the hype. And she I haven't seen wrote... X yet, Derek. So thanks for telling me that Mia Goth plays two characters. Oops. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that did not come mm -hmm. out 10 years ago, did it? That was uh, <laughs> That's my time warp uh, playing Actually, tricks with my mind. I had already heard that, but it was just more fun to make you feel bad about it. <laughs> or just backpedal out of the situation uh, <laughs> drastically. But it's, it's uh, it, she, uh, Mia Goth co-wrote it with this one with Ty West. So I think her influence on it is... Uh, uh, very um, beneficial as well to the story. So definitely uh, going to be interesting to see where they go next with Maxine, but we'll nice. leave it at Pearl for now. Yeah. And I had a chance to check out another new movie, which is always, uh, which is always fun for me because there had been such a gap previously. And um, it was the invitation. So I saw, you know, you know, I like my vampire movies, so I'd have been wanting to see The Invitation. Um, it hit theaters not too long ago, like less than a month ago. Um, and it's on, uh, it's like premium VOD. They have different names for it, but basically it's premium VOD. Um, it was PG-13 when it came out, and there is an unrated version that uh, is available on Amazon. So I watched that. So I can't tell you how the theatrical version was, but it doesn't seem like there was that much more in the unrated version. Maybe some, you know, a little extra blood here. Maybe some of those scenes that got cut short, um, they extended just a little bit. I know the runtime isn't anything too drastic. Um, and it is a, I, I guess if you want to know nothing about the movie, <laughs> like I'm going to give some minor spoilers, but like mm -hmm. this is in the, it's, it's in the trailer, like it's in everything. So if you don't, if you're one that wants to know nothing going in, then, then, skip ahead five minutes but otherwise like it's a vampire movie which i already said but like it's a like a dracula continuation or a story that involves dracula like it's not like you have this this uh character played by uh natalie emmanuel and uh, her name's evie and she finds she's doing um some uh searching of her ancestry and basically discovers that she has relatives in england that she didn't know about and they didn't know about her and uh, they invite her over and, uh, you know, she's like, oh, well, these people are, are, are really nice and some of them are really weird. And uh, but I'm going to, you know, go to London. She gets a free trip and uh, finds out that they're they're not who they they say they are. And there are vampires involved. Like, I won't say who's who's who, but it's a vampire movie. Um, and uh, it's directed by Jessica Thompson, uh, written by Blair Butler, who did uh, Hellfest. And um and also has uh, Thomas Doherty. He's Dracula. You know he is as soon as you meet him. <laughs> um, so there's no there's no real surprise there. He looks like the interesting thing about it is he he like he looks just like Udo Kier in Blood for Dracula. So if, like you've seen that like th th that's what they were going for. Like there's no way they were like <laughs> they didn't know this uh, by the time they started filming it. So it's like he's he's eerily similar. Um, to me, this is. Uh, I guess kind of like a, a no harm, no foul vampire movie. If you, you know, love vampire movies, you're like, okay, well, it's another vampire movie. If you don't really like vampire movies, this is, uh, you know, more or less a middle of the road horror film. It Because it was PG-13, it, and I guess because of the storyline, it feels like a, um, and I often, I often see this, so I'll, I'll call this out quite a bit, but it feels like a pilot for a, for a, a TV show. Like it feels like the first 90 minutes and we have like, you know, the rest of the season to go. Um, and uh, so I think they introduce us to some really cool characters. They do a lot of cool things with like the Dracula mythology and we meet, meet a lot of cool characters. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you know, they kind of go through it too quickly and uh, it didn't do super well. I mean, it, it had a budget of 10 million. It did 30 million at the box office. So maybe there's going to be a sequel, but um, I just, I, I know that it wasn't super well received. So I have a feeling that this is one and done. Well, you had, uh, you had mentioned that it felt like a pilot. So does it, I guess that kind of implies the, that there seems to be room, like if it did do successfully enough, like, is there room for a sequel or? 
I think so. And they set up some cool things with the mythology. It's like, I don't want to spoil too much of it. I know I'm not really spoiling anything for you guys, but for our, for our, our listeners, like they just set up a, they set up a world kind of like they do an underworld, but not to, not to that degree, nearly not, not to that degree. Um, but they just kind of set up this cool world where it's like, Hey, I want to spend some more time here. I want to see how this, how these, these vampires operate. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. And I love how, cause I remember seeing trailers for this in theaters and it didn't seem at least like the initial round of trailers. It didn't seem like there was a lot given away as far as like the vampirism. It seemed more like, you know, what does she do? You know, what are they going? It almost seemed like a cannibal like type sacrificial type horror story. So I'm, it's kind of cool that they at least tried to, you know, not unveil that until like later in the marketing. I think the second trailer might have shown a little bit more, but that's kind of it's almost like a, a vampire movie just snuck in there, which is kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, it's something I want to check out. Yeah, it's interesting because I don't know. It kind of feels like a vampire movie from the start. I mean, I didn't, I didn't see the trailer, so I mean, you kind of know it's a vampire. As long as you watch horror movies, you kind of know it's a vampire <laughs> movie. Um, yeah. So anyway, so uh, yeah, it was a Screen Gems um, slash Sony uh, release, and you know they did uh, Resident Evil and Underworld. So this fits kind of in that world. I'd say the only thing this doesn't have is it doesn't have the R rating. And um, I think that's kind of what holds the movie back. It's like, because they have to develop a movie that everybody can see. It's like the scenes that really kind of would, would kind of push the envelope. This movie just doesn't have. I do also kind of question why they would call it the invitation, like only five or six years after Karen Kusama's masterpiece, <laughs> um, which I think is a very, di- probably a very different movie, but yeah. odd that they called it the same thing. Yeah, this carried a different movie before. I think it was called The Bride or The Brides, and then it got changed before they marketed it. Hmm. Um, And I guess that's another reason why, because I think it was like promoted as like The Brides of Dracula. So like, Mm -hmm. I think that's why I knew it was. So like for the average person watching it, but if you were paying attention to the the development news, like you knew what this movie was. (laughs) Um, and yeah, I agree. I said, well, we're going to watch The Invitation. Chrissy's like, haven't we seen that movie? I'm like, no, this is another <laughs> one. So yes, it's, um, yeah, yeah, the, it's other one. the remake, but not. <laughs> yeah. no, the other one is fantastic. I highly recommend it if you have not seen it. Oh, yeah. And it plays well with the watching it with a group of people, especially uh, a group of friends that are gathered together. And then they're like, wait, are you gathering us here for something similar? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, but like yeah, I said, I think this awesome. is uh, this is fun. Might not be, you know, I know a lot of people don't want to uh, do like the premium VOD, but when this hits, you know, Prime or um, a, a cheaper rental option, might be worth checking out. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that brings us to Brian, and this is Guar. So yeah, I was looking for something to, to watch this week, and I wasn't really feeling a, a like a feature movie so uh i've i've kind of been circling this documentary uh this is guar for a while because i think it's kind of interesting like i've heard the name guar i know generally what they are you know this rock band with over-the-top costumes and and over-the-top performance pieces um but i like i couldn't tell you the name of a single guar song i hadn't like i don't think i've listened to one all the way through uh so i was interested to know like is this something that i would latch on to um and i will tell you if even if you have never heard of guar before seeing this documentary, uh, it is still very, very compelling. This was a very well done uh, movie from director Scott Barber. Um, It's, you know, a lot of footage of the band throughout their 30 plus years together. They started in 1984 in Richmond, Virginia. Um, And just like the story of how they came together is so like pleasantly messy you know this is the the story of basically like a punk rock art commune in this abandoned dairy building in the middle of richmond virginia um and it started as like one of the guys in the band or it wasn't even a band yet one of the guys in the commune wanted to put together a movie and he had put together i think it was if i remember correctly um like he had put together these costumes for like a band that would be part of the movie and then some of the other people uh including uh who would become the the front man and and bassist dave brocky kind of 
took that and ran with it as an actual band. Um, and it was very like DIY, you know, it was, you know, they were extremely rough around the edges in terms of the music they were playing. It was as much uh, performance art as it was music. Um, and then just seeing the story of how the band evolved over 30 years or 30 plus years is just really, really interesting. Um, and just seeing that like dozens of people have come, have rotated through this band over the years. Um, and unfortunately, you know, some of the people they lost, they lost because, you know, they passed away. Um, or if they didn't pass away, they had like really bad health issues. Like there's this whole story about how their original guitarist got shot while they were in one of the cities that they were touring and just they were like randomly uh targeted by people who wanted to rob him and he just got he got shot um and wound up having like long-term health effects from it and left the band it was kind of like one of the ways that like it was an interesting visual because they would have like throughout the documentary they have this poster of the band with the actual band members names and like their characters because everybody in the band was playing this big over the top character um and so as one person would leave you would see them kind of like disappear from the poster and then they would talk about how they got replaced and that person would replace them um it was just really visually well done it made a for a really really good story um and by the end of it it's also just um a lot of like a lot of tears uh because as you know the the band members are getting older more of them are passing away uh including uh lead singer dave brocky who uh, died of a heroin overdose in 2014 so it's you know uh, towards the, the the latter half it's not the easiest watch because you're kind of watching these guys start to 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 fall uh you know to, to kind of um just die <laughs> you know i can't think of a, of a you know way to kind of sugarcoat it and it's um but the the band continues to live on uh so it's just this really great story about like how all these friendships have endured or haven't endured in some cases um and just how this big malleable thing called guar has kind of just kept going um and now it's almost like it's it's almost pushing its fourth decade at this point so really really good i really enjoyed it yes yeah, is you know i mean i'm familiar with guar um but kind of in name and, and visuals only and not as much the music. And um, even so, I'm still definitely very uh, fascinated by the documentary, especially after you, you talked about it. So um, it's something I'll have to uh, catch up on. Yeah, it's it, kind of like me, too. It's one of those bands that I've always been aware of. And I've heard a lot of other musicians and like horror authors and just countless people cite them as an influence. So it's always been one of those like, you know, oh, I got to get, you know, I got to check that out sometime. And I know um, like Dave Rocky appearing on Holliston as a, you know, his character there. I mean, so he's. Yeah, that's he, probably he, what I know them most. Right. Uh, most. Yeah. From. Yeah. <laughs> I always think so, of them for the, uh, the their cameo in Empire Records where they eat Mark. Ethan oh Embry's my character. gosh. Uh, and Ethan yes. Embry's actually, they they interview him. He's like one of the interviewees during the uh, the documentary too. That's amazing. Yeah. See, that's another thing. I mean, they were, it's one of those, they're, you're, they're always on the peripheral, even if you don't follow them directly because they had such a wide influence and still do. So I'm, yeah, I love, you know, I love documentaries in general. So this is something I'll have to check out and put on the old to watch list and maybe bump it up a few hundred places of, above everything else. <laughs> and oddly enough, like, you know, the three of us couldn't name a Guar song. You know, we certainly haven't been to a Guar concert. Uh, so it makes it funnier that by happenstance, my partner has actually been to a Guar concert. Uh, she was like back in the day, uh, she was a, a, a server at like a riverfront venue in Philly. And they were doing some kind of like death metal festival where it was like Lamb of God and a few other bands uh and one of them was guar uh for the most part she was miserable at this concert because none of these bands were really her cup of tea but of all of them she said that guar was at least interesting because they brought like that you know that performance art element to it um so it's just funny to me that like after having seen that now knowing that my partner has been to a guar concert uh even though it was on more of like a uh had to be there <laughs> capacity that's awesome yeah, it's it's one of those things where you never know where you're gonna cross paths with Gar War. <laughs> <laughs> 
And uh, one, I mean, it's on, well, I guess this will be our segue, but it's on Shudder for, uh, for people who want to check it out. And, uh, and I, have, I've, I haven't seen it, but I've seen it on, you know, the, the Shudder list as I've been checking out some movies there. Um, I did just recently uh, catch up on Glorious, which is uh, Rebecca McKendry's movie. Uh, Ryan Quantin, uh, J.K. Simmons, and uh, it's good stuff. I know we talked about it um, a few episodes ago. I hadn't had a chance to see it, and now I have. Um, and uh, I just, I always love um, seeing movies that are like mostly one location. And, you know, it might seem like it's easy. It's not. You got to keep somebody's interest for 80, 90 minutes. And uh, it's not easy to do. And, uh, you know, between the, uh, the director and the script and the actors and, and everybody else involved, they managed to easily keep your interest. Um, I really did love this one. And I think it's a great example of how to make one of these like, you know, one location movies, right? Yeah, I mean, that can go very wrong. Uh, um, uh, actually, you know, if we're going to call back to the Hellraiser Razor, one of the things Derek and I noticed with Hellseeker was that there were like four or five locations in it and like you know that was tedious if not done right where it's just like okay we're back in the police station again like it's that can be something that will get tiresome very quickly but if you do it right it can be amazing and it, it sounds like glorious does that right I, i'm in when i think of doing it right like the the only thing that the the first thing that pops into my mind is ponty pool where it's an entire movie yeah. that takes place in a, a radio studio so you know i i'm I'm really I'm on board with you, Jonathan, like when movies do that well, you can't beat it. it. It's so great to be able to like turn something that is like very small and contained. And, you know, usually when it's done right, it's the implication of the larger stuff that's going on outside that makes it like really, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And this is like I said, it's it's super good. It's 79 minutes, so it doesn't overstay its welcome. And I would highly recommend checking it out. Nice. Yeah. And I really liked the zombie movie stalled where it's a janitor stuck in a bathroom stall for almost the entire movie. So I feel like this would be a very good companion piece to that film based on the setting of the of glorious and the situation and everything. So, yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. I think that's a it's kind of like a fun uh, puzzle to try to solve when you, you have limited uh you know, location and resources and, and also the fact that uh, Rebecca McKendry directed it, I think is a uh, reason enough to check it out. So definitely another one to watch uh, this Halloween season, hopefully. Yeah. There's a lot of great stuff. There's a lot of great titles on shutter. I mean, they, they continue to release them, which is why we, you know, continue to bring them up is because they're, they're, you know, they, they acquire or they have, you know, a lot of original projects. And so it's new titles, you know, every single month, multiple titles a month that are, you know, usually worth your time. Um, it's cool because my friend Chris, every year I give him a list of 30 movies for Halloween to check out. And um, it's a mix of old movies and new movies, but especially looking at the list this year, like a lot of it is coming from Shudder because I'm like, I'm like, he, he didn't have a shutter account. I'm like, you get it, get it for October or, or, or continue to have it. And, uh, and here's, you know, 15 movies from shutter that are, are worth your time. Um, and so I think it's cool to be able to turn people onto that because, you know, you'll hear on social and, and I mean, and that kind of stuff either, you know, also happens in, in the real world or spills out into there. Like there's no good horror movies anymore. Or like there's no original horror movies. I'm like, you are, th there is a world of them, right? There, <laughs> but <laughs> Um, you just don't uh, necessarily know where you're, where to look. And, uh, but, uh, but shutter is definitely one of those places. And then I also, you know, turned him on to, uh, some of the stuff on, uh, on Netflix, on HBO max, on Hulu. So he has a, he has a nice list, um, and some backup titles. So 37 movies this year. Um, yeah. Some extra credit in there. Yeah. Well, sometimes <laughs> they'll be like, I've seen it or like, this isn't my jam. And so I always give them some, or they want to watch more than one in a day. So I always throw some alternates in there um nice. but yeah there, there, there's some good stuff um derek we're, we're back to you and yeah I'm, I'm looking at some of this i have a list of some of the things that we're going to talk about and uh and we're, we're winding down i don't even know if there's that much we can talk about this but i don't want to leave you out i know that you started stranger things we've already had two episodes for stranger things <laughs> right um <laughs> maybe maybe more but i know that you have started Stranger Things, what, four, part one. That's where you Part you're, one. Part one. 
So, um, yes. so how are you liking it so far? I am really, really liking it. Uh, we just started watching this, you know, recently, of course it came out what feels like a year ago, but it, we you know it was at the beginning of the summer, but in Minnesota, you know, we're usually buried under snow for like nine months out of the year. So in the summer, as much as I love when stuff like those summer blockbusters that are released and, and going to the, the movies or watching stuff on streaming services, I generally we fall behind on on our uh, watch list in the summer just because we're trying to take advantage of everything outdoors. And then it's like, oh, man, we have a huge uh, watch list here. But thankfully, I've been able to avoid any and all spoilers somehow uh, through Twitter and just everything in the online world. I have not seen any spoilers about what happens um, in Stranger Things 4 did not watch any trailers. How has this happened? How? <laughs> and I mean, I'm still like, <laughs> I mean, I was still working on Daily Dead. I know. Like, that's why I, I don't know how you haven't been spoiled. Yeah, it's it's really bizarre. But I, I am loving that that happened. Uh, just because I've been enjoying the season so far. We are three episodes in. And uh, as always, watching it with my sister, brother-in-law, and my dad. And uh, we're all taking things out of it that we enjoy. Um, I really like, you know, I love how like every season uh, the Duffer brothers introduce a couple of like key new characters. Um, so, of course, uh, Eddie, uh, the leader of the Hellfire Club in this one is kind of like the big new key character. Uh, and I think he's been just really fun to watch. And just that whole like D&D uh, group is just such a blast. And Pretty uh, wild really... that it turns out he was the mind flare the whole time. No, <laughs> no, but they said he wasn't. How could it be? <laughs> no, <laughs> you promised, you, Brian. Have, you promised. Yeah, I was gonna say, Brian, have you seen an episode? <laughs> Not a minute. No, like, I haven't seen <laughs> anything knows. since like season two. But it's uh, yeah. So it, it's it's been a lot of fun, and you know. Uh, it, you know, it's it, what's funny is that I've been, you know, waiting like a lot of people have been waiting more than 10 years for a new Nightmare on Elm Street movie. And I feel like I'm kind of getting a new Nightmare on Elm Street movie with this season. And I, I don't mean that as a knock. Like, I love what they're doing. Obviously, they're paying homage to a Nightmare on Elm Street. I mean, Robert England is in this season, I know, even though I haven't seen him yet. Uh, so it's it's definitely a love letter to a Nightmare on Elm Street, and but it is it's it's funny like even the opening episode of the season, there's a scene a dinner table scene that's almost like a direct, uh, a direct replica of a scene from a Nightmare on Elm Street five, uh, the Dream Child. So I love like seeing like and then the music choices like it's totally like the like Vecna is basically like uh, Freddy Krueger. Uh, in in uh, Stranger Things, so I'm I'm loving it just because I'm like, oh, okay, if we want to go down that road, let's have some fun with it. So it's it's been really cool to see them kind of do their version of that. Well, plus with the links of the episodes, you're not just getting one Nightmare on Elm Street; you're getting like five of them. Yeah, you're just getting started. Exactly. There's like the last episode's like an hour and a half or two hours. So yeah, you it, have. Uh... It, oh, yeah, yeah, we're we're just we're just getting started, and you know it's funny because uh, with. Um, Mike Flanagan's Midnight Mass. I feel like we kind of got um, like his version of Salem's Lot recently. So I feel like Netflix is kind of, and, and you know, it, part of it too is that you know filmmakers that grew up on this stuff in the '80s and '90s, like they're making their own stuff now. And of course, there's going to be influences from stuff that they watched growing up. And uh, I, I just love how sometimes it almost feels like they're doing you know, their, their version of that, which I think is uh, a, a good way to pay tribute to something. And you still get plenty of new content in there as well. So it's kind of like a, a fun little twist on some familiar uh, horror elements that, you know, we grew up watching with Nightmare on Elm Street and Stephen King properties and all that fun stuff. Yeah, and you got to remember, too, that I always say that like 80s directors, writers, like they were always influenced by the 50s. So it's like, you know, Stephen King had definitely seen like the Universal Monsters and the Hammer Dracula movies. And so, you know, it may not be exactly the same influences, but there's definitely, you know, those those inform it. So it's, you know, every generation takes a little bit from the, the generation before it or multiple generations before it and you try to do your own thing. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. I'm, you know, looking forward to watching the rest of the season. So I'm hoping maybe the next time we talk, I'll 
I'll know more, but we shall see. Hopefully I just continue to avoid spoilers. I'm going to have to avoid Brian, apparently. So Yeah, no, he, he spoils it all. I'm Vecna, sorry. Yep, <gasps> spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dreaming right now, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Keep running up that hill, Derek. <laughs> um and so to uh to wrap things up we uh we're going to gaming because we we love talking about our video games yes we do and uh derek even though we didn't tell you about this and you haven't joined us yet <laughs> um, <laughs> that uh brian and i have started playing aliens fire team elite we only played a little bit but we send started. in the marines <laughs> but we started <laughs> we did start I guess I'll go with the bad part first. We did start because I'm like, well, we can cross play. And so he had, I had my, I had it on uh, Xbox, um, Xbox one, Xbox series S. I don't remember the new Xbox, whatever it's called. I can't keep up with it. I had uh, the game. I had been playing it last year. I had finished the campaign, but then they added cross play support like just a couple months ago. So like Brian picked up his copy for PlayStation. I'm like, good, we can cross play. Oh, I, I made sure I signed up for, for my, what, what do you call it? Like Xbox Gold or Xbox Live. He had his PlayStation Network Pass. We couldn't connect. We could not cross play. We followed we tried the instructions. for like 45 minutes. We followed like, the instructions. Yeah. We were fully patched and it would just not connect. So if anybody's going to, is trying to do the same thing, just know that it's a, it's a coin flip. I read people that had no problem uh, cross playing. We had many a problem. So I'm like, well, screw this. I want to play with you. So we, I just got the PlayStation copy. I lost all my progress on my Xbox character. <laughs> he had a nice man bun and I had a sparkly gun. And I had a, I had a sparkly smart gun. I had a red um, uh, carbine and it was uh, it was great. And so now I started back at level one, which is fine. And uh, and we started the campaign. And how, how has it been going so far, Brian? Uh, really good. It passed the first test uh, because it's in third person. It did not make me want to vomit from motion sickness. So score on that. Uh, and beyond that, it's it's very immersive in the world of you know aliens, uh, specifically aliens. You know, it's you know you're not getting like the the original alien tension creepy vibe. Um, you're just thrown kind of right into the shit with these things. Um, in a way that's like, it's almost when you first start seeing aliens, it's almost a little anticlimactic, not necessarily in a bad way, but they're just there all of a sudden. Like they don't have some like big reveal where one pops out. You just see like, oh shit, there's hundreds of aliens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, really like the idea that like you can play different kinds of Marines. So I was a gunner. So I just had like the standard plasma rifle and shotgun. Uh, Jonathan's character was like the heavier weapons guy. So he had the smart gun and, you know, some, some different weapons there. Uh, you get all kinds of little like add-ons and uh, consumables that you can use. Um, and it's also really like, they know the audience they're playing to. So they do the right things in terms of like, you have the motion sensor and you know, stuff's coming. Cause you start hearing that telltale, you know, ping that anybody who's seen aliens knows when you hear that it's bad stuff coming. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. I also really appreciate um, Jonathan is like, down to business when you start playing he's very into like <laughs> giving you updates letting you know when he's reloading and i'm like i i don't even know when i'm reloading i just i all of a sudden i'll i'll see the guy switching his his like by the time i know to say i'm reloading my guy's done reloading so i'm like i'm gonna have to get caught up in the in those mechanics of it a little bit um but yeah it's it's a load of fun definitely something where if you can you want to play it with with multiple people because um, I've been playing it like single person a little bit with you can have like bots on your fire team um, and it's fun, but I think it's definitely a better experience with playing with your friends. Yeah, yeah 100 percent because I play with bots because networking was bad and, and, and I don't have any friends um, outside of the two of you. And uh, <laughs> but, wow, this took a turn. <laughs> no, I, nobody had it <laughs> for Xbox. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, so thankfully there were bots for me to play with. But what happened was their um, their um, matchmaking was no good. So it was like waiting mm -hmm. for a player, like waiting for someone to join and just like not, nothing happened. Um, but yeah, but it's definitely it was great playing with you because the the bots that they don't they they're not able to keep up. 
and uh and so usually that's just me trying to save the bots who have fallen um in in this case it was you trying to save me who would fall like i would love to this would be a really fun one to do on twitch because i think it would be fun for people to watch like you saying like oh there's a big one like i think there's one it's called like a beta or something like that it'll come out of the vent tackle somebody slash them three times and then like run away and like jonathan will be like hey look out for the beta and like me if you cut to me i'm already on the ground just getting pummeled <laughs> by this thing it's like yeah i found it <laughs> yeah it was um yeah it was it was good and yeah you know we definitely or or, or you know I, I've, I've done a lot of halo gaming and stuff like that so like uh, and for this too, like calling out the reload because I have a smart gun and that thing takes forever so you you shoot fast it does it'll do tracking but reloading that because it's like 250 rounds or 150 rounds a clip there's some downtime um (laughs) but it's it's cool it definitely like you said it definitely like nails the atmosphere of aliens it's a lot of fun you know if you it doesn't like it's not a live service game so like it doesn't compare to Fortnite in terms of like updates and net code and all that but if you love aliens like it's a lot of fun if you like alien play alien isolation because that game's awesome Mm -hmm. um but uh but yeah i still highly recommend this they've they've patched it and it's it, i mean it, the game plays really well it looks good um so yeah derek if you want to pick up a playstation copy um we have we have slowly started playing we we played two missions uh we we won the first one we died the second one <laughs> But this is one of now the invite comes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is one of those that like you definitely will have to like keep playing the same mission a few times, or you'll have to die a few times because you need that mm-hmm. XP to level up your guns. Um, the missions as they keep going, obviously they get harder. Um, you're introduced to like new like boss type aliens, and you, you they have some really cool. And what they're really great at too is the map making. Like as you continue to get through some of those maps, like they're just really cool. Um, and they do a great job of kind of bridging the different movies together. So it's, it's definitely nice. cool. And I appreciate that they bring, they incorporate new xenomorphs, like stuff that you'll only see in the game. Um, so like you'll see xenomorphs that like, they will be like spitter xenomorphs where they will be halfway yeah. across the room and they will be just like blowing acid at you. Um, there's like these ones that have like glow in the dark, uh, like carapaces or whatever you call like their, their heads. Um, and they're like shielded and then when you hit them or like when they die they'll explode there's just all kinds of like different things that they're bringing to the mix to kind of change up the the you know kind of the approach to gameplay because you have to deal with each one of these in different ways and it makes you kind of like strategize a little bit more oh interesting yeah i like that a lot it sounds like uh Almost like Alien Resurrection with the lab just creating all sorts of different fun xenomorph mutations. So yeah, that's kind of what they did. So there's like, you know, there's like some that'll charge you. You know, it's kind of more like the Alien Three Alien. There's the one, like I said, there's one that spit acid, as Brian mentioned, and um, and then there's some some really big ones. There's like (laughs) some of them kind of like the toys because there's like a rhino alien (laughs) toy and there's a rhino alien coming. Um, And uh, but yeah, it's really cool. So this also, is more. Oh, so th- just wanted to say this is like Alien Isolation is more like Resident Evil Biohazard, but this is more like a Resident Evil Two kind of shoot 'em up style as well. Like this is definitely compare. more arcade style. Arcade, yeah. So okay. I mean, it's even. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's third person, like like you know Resident Evil Two, but it's definitely much more action oriented. I think okay. we had like I think in a mission which takes like twenty to thirty minutes, we probably killed between the two of us and then our our. Um, npc teammate we we killed about a thousand aliens which by the way i was in like last place in all stats and that includes the bot like the bot was doing better than i did (laughs) yeah but also we got to grade that on a curve because my smart gun tracks so i mean that's just i have have the heavy class but it's but you then you have the shoddy so it's easier for you to take down those big aliens which i can't so you're welcome yes (laughs) thank you you're the the perfect done without me yeah (laughs) Also, Derek, I did I want to just mention that I appreciate that you managed to work in Alien Resurrection into the conversation. Mm. I think I saw yep, Jonathan's eye twitch just a little bit when you did that. It did. <laughs> it did. But we're getting a new Alien a... movie, I hope. So, you know, mm. good good stuff to think about. And we got an Alien, alien TV. TV show. Oh, and I saw concept art from it. So it looks good. Intrigued? Nice. Yeah, it's... Um, I thought it was going to be more like modern day based 
and it doesn't it looks like it's it's future like even though apparently it's supposed to take place on earth what i'm seeing is like it's future earth so it is mm. definitely not what i was expecting in a good way nice oh interesting yeah and then we're gonna get it looks like we're getting a fetty alvarez alien movie for hulu likely so um yeah the, i'm glad prey did well hellraiser it's gonna do well so yeah keep it up with the uh kind of be in the safe haven for franchises Hulu. yeah i love it but then yeah. but then taking barbarian to uh to theatrical like <laughs> like the guts on 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 20th century fox and disney like i mean it was a, such a smart move but to be like we have a new predator movie we have a new hellraiser movie and we have this airbnb horror movie that's like really wild but like you know well this, this is the one we're taking to theaters like <laughs> i mean it was the right move but but it was impressive yeah definitely a curveball especially yeah. given that it was like you know original yeah. ip so yeah i mean to me that would have been like a prime movie for streaming but not that i not that i wanted it to go there i just i'm i'm fascinated by the choice yeah absolutely yeah it's yeah. well you know, it's the funny thing too nowadays is like some stuff gets simultaneous some stuff gets theatrical only for a little bit and then other stuff like never sees theatrical so yeah and i think for accessibility reasons it's like cast a wide net because there are a lot of mm -hmm. people who still aren't going out um there are a lot of people that can't go out and so to have that vod option um i think is pretty great oh yeah mm -hmm. absolutely yeah but um this episode has almost come to an end. I do want to call out that because Fantastic Fest is going to be going on um, when you're listening to this episode, we will have coverage from Heather, from Emily, from Michelle, um, who will be covering Fantastic Fest. So we'll have some reviews. We'll have some interviews. There's always a surprise movie or two. I don't know what they're going to be, um, but, uh, but hopefully something cool. And uh, we'll be reporting on that. Um, other things to look forward to. I will have some minor coverage from New York Comic Con. I say minor because like I'm going to be there, but like I'm I'm being I'm going there as a fan. But I'm, it's not like I'm going to cover something. <laughs> um, but I'm going there more as a fan. It's it's like my my birthday weekend, and so I'm always like, yeah, hey, I want to go go to Comic Con. I haven't gone there in a little bit. They have a mask policy, so it makes me feel feel okay. good about it. Um, mask mandate. Uh, Read Pop wasn't for some previous events, but they did for New York Comic Con. Uh, San Diego did it, and um, and they did a good job enforcing it, even though I wasn't there. Uh, I heard from people. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll have some coverage from New York Comic Con. Uh, and then, of course, we'll have uh, coverage of, of Halloween ends and a bunch of other cool things coming up. We'll have coverage of the new Hellraiser movie. And, uh, and yeah, so a lot to look forward to. So keep an eye out for all of that. And uh, we also want to thank Brian, our engineer, for helping us out each and every episode. It was also his birthday recently. So happy belated birthday, Brian. And as always, we want to thank our listeners, including those of you who've signed up for a Corpse Club membership. Make sure to visit corpseclub.com to check out our latest episode and our backlog. You can sign up to become a member, which will give you a t-shirt, pin, membership card, and you can pick an episode topic. Don't forget to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Every rating and review helps. You can find us on YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, and all of your favorite podcast providers. If you want to get in touch, you can reach out anytime. We're at contact at corpseclub.com. On Twitter, we're at Daily Dead News. We're at Corpse Club. And on Instagram and Facebook, we are under Corpse Club as well. Thanks again for listening. And until next time, stay scary. Stay scary.